YTPC. Andrew here, aka Bluefin Piper, coming at you. As you can tell from the first day of spring, and it almost feels like it. I think it actually probably does feel like it. It's, um, without the wind, it is a beautiful sunny day here in New Jersey in the 50s. Uh, a little bit chilly with the wind, but not too bad as you can see out in a sweatshirt here and um, absolutely loving it. So a uh, beautiful Sunday here in New Jersey. Hope everyone out there in the YTPC is doing well. And today we are back for part two of the former tobacco series. And it is going to be former's straight grain flake. So for those of you that are following along, uh, last week we opened up a tin of the former's cross grain flake, a, another Virginia Perique, which this one is as well. Um, and been smoking that on and off, uh, been continuing to enjoy that blend and uh, actually can say it really is a nice kind of all day Virginia Perique if you want. Um, and you can also settle down with it and get some, you know, get some nice flavors out of it if you just kind of relax and sip it. But um, overall enjoying it. Uh, I'm going to, uh, when I get through all three of these uh, Virginia Perique blends, we'll uh, do a, a recheck on them all and also try to pick a winner out of the three for us. So that'll be coming up later. If you're interested in seeing the uh, cross grain flake, make sure you check the link down below and you can check out the uh, video for the former's cross grain flake. All right, well, before we, uh, so yeah, so before we get started, um, what am I going to be smoking it in? Well, I am going to be smoking today in this absolutely gorgeous Costello Costello billiard. Um, this is uh, definitely one of the nicest pipes that I own here. Um, really, really beautiful grain on this pipe. I'm not sure if it's coming out with the sunlight. Got a cool little plateau rim. It's got this nice saddle bit. It's actually like a, a purplish gray saddle bit. Um, so love this pipe. All right. Well, um, so let's go ahead and uh, talk a little bit about the former straight grain flake. This is, as I said, a Virginia Perique. Supposedly no topping, as Tobacco Review says. Um, and it has uh, just, um, I think, about 17 reviews in Tobacco Reviews and uh, 3.0 rating, so still pretty high. Uh, seems like it gets a lot of love, and although, again, harder to find and get in the U.S., so you don't get as many uh, people talking about it. Um, but um, another German-made tobacco similar to the, I mean, so they're made in Germany, um, K&K, &K, and um, actually made by... Uh, Dan Tobacco Manufacturing, so um, as I mentioned last time. All right, let's open this up. I'm going to pause for a second, and we'll open this up, and I'll be right back. All right, folks. All right, we're back. Got the tin, just popped it. Got a nice little pop out of it. Um, there we go. So, similar kind of smell to the cross grain flake, as I guess you'd maybe expect. All right, you know, again, we got some nice oils here. You can see on that maybe, we got that nice Dan insert. And this tobacco, it looks a little different. It looks like we got a little bit brighter here. If we can make that out, I'm gonna put my sunglasses up and make sure you guys can see that. There you go. I think the, um, you know, the cross screen was, um, yeah, similarly, it's interesting, but the cross screen um, I think was, Maybe a little darker browns in there. This looks like it's got some lighter browns. It also looks like it might have some more perique in it. Um, I'm gonna just pull this out for you guys, show you, um, like the cross grain, uh, interestingly, some beautiful flakes here, um, and it's pressed together. Uh, interesting, I'm not sure how they pack this, but these flakes are just all compressed into one giant block almost, um, you can see. So you can see there, got a lot of nice, um, Darker uh, shades in there from the Perique, I assume. Um, a couple different types of lighter and golden Virginias in there and, um, you know, lighter brown Virginias. As you can see, this is pressed pretty good. Um, almost a block of tobacco. And we'll do a quick, uh, quick smell here. I think this one's a little different than the uh, the notes on this are a little different than the cross screen. The cross screen to me had um, pretty much that stereotypical kind of grassy hay green tea note to it with a little bit of sweetness there in the background. This this is more um, 
the, the grassy hay is there, I guess, um, kind of wet grass hay, but it's, it's more bready, um, more bakery kind of smelling, uh, which is interesting. Yeah, you get that kind of green tea too, but um, not getting a huge amount of sweetness. Maybe a little bit of tartness there too, but well, pretty nice. All right, I'm gonna pause. We're gonna uh, load this up and I'll be back. All right, guys, we're back. A cameo from my boy Finn. And we're lit. As you can tell, burning well. Um, and I will say this tobacco was a little drier than the cross grain, um, at least in my tin here. Um, it, it's perfect, ready to smoke dry um, to the point where if you let it out, for you know, 15, 20 minutes, it might actually be like crispy or an hour or something, it, it could get crispy dry. So uh, this is absolutely perfect smoke smokeability if you like your tobaccos dry. I mean, if you like a little bit of moisture, it might even be a little overly dry, but not bad though. Obviously broke, rubbed out real easy and um, it lit up. I think Probably got to be a little careful lighting this one just because of the dryness, uh, but it, it lit up real well. And I will say the initial light, wow, this definitely right off the bat, at least for the initial light, is, is hitting me with a lot more perique than the cross green flake. Getting a lot more spiciness in the mouth, on the tongue, and also a stronger retrohale um, spiciness with the perique. So, sorry, John, it's another one you're not going to like. Some similar flavor profiles, but uh, but it but it does have a little bit different flavor profile too. More breadiness. Um, the grassy hay is there, um, but not as much bright um, citrusiness in in this um, smoke as I was getting from the uh, cross grain flake. Definitely getting a lot of that spice. There's some citrusiness and tartness there too. All right, I'm gonna pause the video. We'll come back when I'm maybe halfway, three quarters of the way down and can give you guys a final kind of first impressions on the former's straight grain flake. All right, we'll be back. Okay guys, we're back. And uh, we are down, if you can see that, down to <clears throat> pretty much uh, the bottom uh, of the bowl here. And I will say, um, so let's talk a little bit about the former's straight grain and kind of wrap this one up. The, right off the bat, uh, as far as logistics for the smoke goes, um, again, super smooth smoke, no harshness at all, no tongue bite whatsoever, burning, for the most part, burning very cool. Um, you know, uh, I did uh, smoke, try to smoke it a little fast a few times and, really didn't didn't heat up over, over overly too much in this bowl so it really burned perfect very few relights required I think if you're attentive you might not need to relight it at all um, so that's all positives um, and certainly right off the bat I will say the for me the cross grain flake definitely more of kind of an all-day vapor um, you know this one is uh, definitely stronger uh, also getting more of a nick hit off of this blend. So definitely more medium, uh, medium to high side of the uh, Nick, uh, Nick chart there. I'm feeling it a little bit. The um, interesting too, um, so a lot more pepperiness. Uh, the retrohale on this blend at times can be mouthwateringly strong peppery, um, which is definitely, I didn't get much of that unless you really try to do a Mel Harris uh, retrohale um, with the uh, cross grain. I didn't get much of that at all. Um, similar flavor profiles though, you know, definitely on the retro hail, you get some of that kind of orangey citrusiness in the smoke, some of that grassy hay, um, but uh, it's a bright smoke, uh, I like, I like to say. Um, now as you smoke down to about a third of the bowl, um, especially without relights, I found that you get that uh, Paris kit isn't as bad, isn't as strong. At some points it actually even kind of um, went away. But the, um, and that's when I started getting kind of more of the breadiness from the smoke, a little bit more um, kind of raisiny, 
tartness and sweetness coming out. And I saw one of the reviews uh, compared this to maybe a stronger, spicier version of Dunhill Navy Rolls. And I haven't had Dunhill Navy Rolls in a while, but I think that's not a bad comparison. I think if you like Dunhill Navy Rolls, if you like, you know, a Scudo for me tends to be more kind of bready, bakery kind of sweetness to it um, with some with some brightness. And so that that is similar, but you don't get as much of that sweetness from this blend. It's more um, got more bright Virginia flavor to it for me. And uh, definitely pepper, more spice to it for sure. A little bit of a, maybe a little bit of florally Virginia note to it too. Not, you know, not by any stretch like Lakeland or floral essence like that, but there is some floral. It's almost like if the tobacco was grown in a, you know, field that had some kind of, had like flowers growing in it or something. You just kind of get that kind of bright florally notes um, there almost. Um, but, you know, I think if I had to kind of sum it up between the cross grain and the straight grain, the cross grain, like I said, is more of kind of an all day vapor. This is definitely a stronger um, wake you up in the morning uh, type of vapor that I'm actually drinking some coffee right now and it's going really well. All right, so there you go, guys. I'm gonna wrap this one up. Um, really enjoying the former series so far. Um, and uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna wrap it up with part three uh, of the bur former bird's eye flake, and that'll be interesting, another Virginia Perique. Um, surprising they didn't just do a straight Virginia at all, but I thought the straight grain, you know, you'd think maybe would be a straight Virginia, but nope. So, um, but overall, been very pleased with the former blends and absolutely would recommend them for anybody who's a vapor fan. You should try to find yourself a tin and try these, especially if you like the Dan Tobacco a style of Virginia's, um, you know, uh, very, um, very European style, different than uh, the, you know, certainly different than Samuel Goweth. For the Samuel Goweth blends, I tend to get more of that kind of, more of the tea flavor. Um, and I don't get that, and a lot more tartness in that Sam Goweth blend. I don't get that here. Um, I mean, just more brightness in these, more oranginess, um, kind of orange, brightness, lemony, citrusy notes to these smokes. So overall, um, enjoying it so far. Stay tuned. Like I said, when we wrap up the bird's eye flake, we'll do a, a, a comparison of all three. And maybe at the end of this, if you're interested, I'll put a side by side of the straight grain and the cross grain flake just to give you a look at the two flakes. Um, all right. Until next time, thanks for hanging with me. Tight lines. Happy smokes. Take care, guys.